St. Luke's Gospel, and beginning with the 24th chapter and the 30, the 31st verse, uh, I'll say the 30th verse of the 24th chapter. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, and he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And may the Lord add his blessing. My text would be, as I would call it tonight, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him. Now, it's hot, but I wish you would bear just as patiently as you can for just a few moments, and I'll try to hurry. But now, we want to look solemnly at the Word, God's wonderful Word. And we are praying that God in some way will open our eyes tonight. Amen. If Easter is just the celebration of a historical event and that alone, then we have a little reason to doubt. We have a little reason to question because it would be left upon the solemn thought of just taking the word. And if Christ hadn't made the promises that he did, then we'd also just wouldn't have the evidence that we got. Amen. But our blessed Lord said, while he was here on earth, a little while and the world will see me no more. Now that word world there comes from the world order, the peoples of the earth. The world will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Now, those words are just as true as any of the other words that we have spoken to this week out of the Bible. Just as true as any other words in the Bible. A little while, and the world will see me no more. They'll never have their eyes open. There's people that's born in the world, not by the will of God, but by their own selfish choice, would not believe him if he was standing right here talking to you tonight. It's sad to say, but the Bible said that they were born in this world to this condemnation. Jude and about the third verse. Now, but to you tonight, who comes out and stands around in the room and packs together in a little hot building like this, you never come just to be seen. You come for some purpose. And to my opinion, you come with the sincerity of your heart for a closer walk with God. To leave away from here tonight a better person than you was when you come in. That's what I prayed as I entered the door tonight. Lord, make me a better person when I come out tonight than I am as I go in. Now, when he, before his going away, he made these kind of statements. He said, He that believeth on me, St. John 14, chapter 7, verse he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. More than this shall he do, for I go to my Father. I go and come again. Now we'll find the works that he did. The works that he did, he did not claim to be a great person. He was just a humble man. He didn't speak with any high vocabulary. He just spoke as an ordinary man. He lived among the poor. 
The foxes had dens and the birds had nests, but he didn't have a place to lay his head. He had one garment that was given to him. It was wove throughout without a seam in it. That's why they gambled for it. Why was that? Because the prophecy of the Old Testament had to be fulfilled. Amen. They parted my garments, cast lot for my vesture. So they could not split it by the seam. They had to gamble for it. And that was to fulfill the prophecy of the Old Testament. But we'll notice in just a few moments, what did he do? And I believe tonight it's the hunger of every one of our hearts. <coughs> From the least until the oldest. Tonight, to see Jesus Christ. Amen. It's my heart's desire. Amen. And why is it if we claim by the scriptures, the radios blasted today, the television put on programs, dramas were set, that he is not here, but he has risen. Well, then, if he has risen, the Bible said in Hebrews 13, 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Now, here's where it is, folks. That's either the truth or it isn't the truth. That's, if that isn't the truth, then the Bible is false. And then the words are false. And then we're lost. And there's no resurrection of the dead. And we are just making believe. But if it is true, then it's got to vindicate itself. If you say this water is wet, i never seen water before. You pour it on me and it's not wet, then you, your words are untrue. But if you pour it on me and it is wet, then your words is true. If Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then the Bible is true. If He isn't the same yesterday, today, and forever, then it isn't true. If the words of God isn't true, then Christ isn't true. Then if the words of God isn't true... God isn't true. But then if the Word of God is true, then the Bible's true, God's true, Christ is true, and we should be true to the cause. Amen. Correct. Now, when He was on earth, He did not claim to be any great healer. How many knows the Son of God never claimed to be a healer? Amen. Exactly right. He said, I can do nothing in myself. But what I see the Father doing, it's not me that doeth the works, he said. It's the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. What kind of works did he do? We find in the Bible where a fellow by the name of Philip got saved. And he went over and found a friend, Nathaniel, way back, 30 miles around the mountain. He brought him back to Jesus. And when he found him, he was under a tree praying. And he said, come see who we found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. He said, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? He said, come and see. That's the best evidence I know. Don't take somebody else's word for it. Come see for yourself. He said, come and see. And when he come, Jesus was standing in the line, perhaps praying for the people. And when Philip come up with Nathaniel... Jesus said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. He said, When did you know me, Rabbi? It astonished him. Whence knowest thou me? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. Amen. Thirty miles away, through a mountain, yet I saw you. Amen. That showed who he was. He was the omnipresent God. Amen. Not just a prophet, but God Himself manifested in the flesh. That's the reason He can lay it, His life down and take it up again. Amen. A little woman come out to draw some water one day. And He spoke to her. He said, Woman, bring me a drink. She said, It's not customary for you Jews to ask us Samaritans such. We have no dealings with each other. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. I'd bring you water you don't come here to draw. And she said, the well is deep, sir. 
You have nothing to draw with, and where could you get this water? What was he doing? Contacting her spirit. And when he found what her trouble was, her trouble was that she was living in adultery. She had five husbands and was living with her sixth one. And Jesus said to her, Go get your husband and come here. And she said, I don't have any husband. He said, No, you had five. And the one that you're now living with is not yours. So you said, Well, look now, the Jew, when Jesus performed that miracle to him, that real staunch Jew, real true Jew, said, Thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel. He knew that them signs were supposed to accompany the Messiah. And now here's a Samaritan. When that miracle was done on her, she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. But who are you? He said, I'm he that speaks to you. She left her water pot and ran into the city and said, Come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Amen. Amen. Certainly. On through the scriptures we could take it. How that he did the things that the Father showed him. The Bible said over in St. John, when they questioned him about why he didn't heal all those crippled people. And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, St. John 5, 19. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. Now, if Christ has risen from the dead, and is among us today and promise that the same things that he did that we do also that's either the truth or it isn't the truth the Bible said he's the same yesterday today and forever and friend I'm just happy to know today that I truly with all that is within me believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God Amen. he was conceived and born the immaculate birth he suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, buried, rose again the third day, and ascended in the heaven, Amen. and sitting at the right hand of His majesty. And the Holy Spirit is here carrying on the same work that He did when He was here on earth. Amen. What a beautiful thought. What a beautiful morning. The first resurrection morning. The first Easter that had ever dawned on the earth. Do you realize that this Easter that we're celebrating of his resurrection is only pointing to a great Easter that's the coming, the hour that he comes from the heavens and all that are dead in Christ shall rise and go Amen. with him. Amen. Thank God. We are only looking forward to that great Easter coming. And today, how beautiful it is. What a consolation. What a proof we have. When the Bible declares it, when His ominous presence declares it, when His healing power declares it, when His great spirit declares it, when everything in nature declares it, His church declares it, my heart declares it, every born-again man's heart declares it, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and will come again. And He's the same now, yesterday, today, and forever. Now notice, it was on this beautiful Easter morning there'd been a lot of rumor talk. Some women had come back from the grave and said they saw a vision of angels. And they supposed it to be a gardener. Mary, the mother, for she heard a voice speak behind her and said, Who do you seek? And when he turned, she turned and said, They've taken away my Lord. I don't know where they have laid him. If you know, tell me where he's at and I'll go get him. He turned and said, Mary. And she looked at him and she said, Rabona, which means master. 
He said, don't touch me, for I've not yet ascended, but I will ascend to your Father and to my Father, to my God and to your God, but go tell my disciples I'll meet him in Galilee. How that seemed to be an idle tale of this man that they seen embalmed and died, buried, and this is the fourth day or the third day since he was dead. Peter got discouraged and wanted to go fishing. Two of them said, one by the name of Cleophas, said, we'll just go back home to Jerusalem. And on their road, walking along that morning, when Peter got his fishing line and took off fishing, these two were on the road sad. And as he went along the road saying, well, I guess life is not worth living. Oh, how we believed that he was the Messiah. How could that man who raised the dead ever stand and let that high priest make fun of him? How could that man who could see vision after vision ever let a Roman soldier put a rag around his face and hit him on the head and said, If thou be a prophet, tell us who hit him. How could he scream for mercy on the cross? seeing that he could even raise up the dead. Oh, it was discouraging moment. And those discouraging times comes to every believer to test you and to try you Amen. and to see if you really do believe. Every son that cometh to God must first be tested, child trained. There will be some of you here tonight, no doubt, We'll go through that same testing. If we should call a prayer line, I have no idea who's got prayer cards. No one else knows. They were just all shuffled up together and hand to you. I'll call from somewhere. Wherever's on my mind at the time. We can't stand but a few at a time. A couple dozen, maybe a pass over the prayer line. All I want to come. You may think that he's passed you by, but he hasn't. He's just testing you. Amen. Just seeing if you really will believe him. The vision doesn't heal. The vision only vindicates his presence. Amen. I was just sitting here looking just now across the audience. Now I see a, a friend of mine, a Mrs. Cox from down in Kentucky. Had a big cancer on her face a few weeks ago. It done eat plum out around her eye. She was dying. Mrs. Woods, my good friend, called me on the phone and was crying, said, I believe it's going to eat mother's eye out in a few days. The doctor got to tampering with it with some kind of stuff and scattered it. It was in a terrible fix. Went in and offered a simple little prayer with an anchored faith that it would happen. And here she said, sure tonight, Perfectly normal and well. Not even a spot of it left. It's all healed up on her face sitting right here in front of us. Others around with the same thing. Why? It's because Jesus Christ raised from the dead and he lives. Amen. The same one that could touch a leper and said, I will be thou clean. Can touch a cancer and say, I will be thy clean. If he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As Cleophas and them walked along, discouraged, they were kind of one of those sad mornings, seeming like everything going wrong. And all of a sudden, someone stepped out or become behind them, walked up and caught up with them, and little did they know that that was the Lord Jesus. He was alive, and many people that loved him didn't know it. And that's the same as it is today. There's many people today that love the Lord and don't realize. You could tell them about it, and yet they can't recognize that he's alive forevermore tonight, that he's sharing this church tonight, that he's in the midst of us and Amen. will be till he comes in a physical Amen. corporal body. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And as they went along and began to talk along the road, 
Jesus, I want you to notice the first thing Jesus did went right straight to the Scripture. He said, Oh, foolish of heart, is it hard for you to believe what the prophet said? For he just asked them, Why are you so sad? And they said, Are you but a stranger? Don't you know that Jesus of Nazareth, who we thought to be the Messiah, the Deliverer of Israel, don't you know that this is even the third day since he was crucified and he was a mighty man in the Word? He was a mighty prophet because of many miracles and things God did by him. And this is the third day. And now they killed him and buried him. And he was in the grave. And some women come to us and told us that he had risen from the dead. And we know it was just a foolish tale. So we're on our road back. Then when he began to open up the word. Oh, I love God's eternal word. He began to go to the scriptures, beginning with Moses. He never left anything uncovered. He went straight to the Word. And he God sent man. I don't care who he is. He'll stay with God's Word. If he doesn't, he's not a true servant of God. He went right to the Word. And he showed by the Word that Christ was to die, raise again and enter into his glory. Now, oh, how they must have talked. I'd like to have that little few hours Amen. talk with him, wouldn't you? Yeah. Along Amen. the road. You say, well, Brother Branham, I sure would. Wish I could. Well, we can have it right now. That's him talking to you in your heart. Amen. You just don't recognize it. Now notice, as he drew near the city, evening was coming. He made out like he was going to go on by. He might do that to you too. He might make you think. That he's going to go on by. But he won't. He won't go by. He just wants you to invite him. And they said to him. Oh the day is far spent. Now don't go on. But please come in and abide with us. You just give him that kind of an invitation. Find out what will take place. Said the day is far spent now. You come and abide with us. It's towards the evening. Then he turned and went in at the little restaurant, the little inn. And Europe, they still have it. You eat and sleep and everything's all paid for in one bill, your hotel. And when he got inside with them, here's a beautiful part. All that day while they talked with him, he never said one thing yet. They had walked with him and talked with him before, but they did not recognize it. Who kept you from having an accident the other day? Who let that baby get well? Who paid that grocery bill for you? It was him, but you just don't recognize it. Who is it give you help to come out to the church tonight? It's him, but you don't recognize it. Amen. Oh, if we could only do as them, just bid him to come in. And when he come in, got inside, shut the doors, then he'd done something. No other man could do it that way. He was the only one that could do it. For they had been with him before his crucifixion. And he took that bread. And just the way he did it, that was his own way of doing it. And their eyes come open and they knew that could only be him. Amen. He didn't tarry with them very long. He vanished out of their sight just in a moment. And on their road they went back just as hard as they could go. Light footed, just as shouting the victory to tell them that the Lord has raised indeed. Amen. They didn't go back to argue their religion. They didn't go back to fuss about it, but they just knew he had raised from the dead. Now, friends, if Jesus Christ, the living Son of God, after 1900 years ago, if the Bible is true, he said, I am alive forevermore. He's just as alive here in this building tonight. 
as he was the day of his resurrection. He's just in a body. Some of them are gathered together and he come right through the walls, appeared right into the midst of them and said, Here, feel me. Look at my scars and my hands. Does a spirit have flesh and bones like I got? He said, Give me something to eat. And they give him fish and bread and he stood there and eat it before him. So the spirit doesn't eat like you see me eating. Amen. What is he? He's that great living Jehovah God. Amen. That's in our midst tonight. He's in the midst of wherever two or three are gathered. I'll be in their midst. And now here's what I think. If Christ will come to this audience of people while you're sweating, waiting, and will prove on this Easter that He is alive and standing in this building tonight, then you've got a right to ask Him for anything that He died for and believe that you will receive Him. Amen. Do you believe that to be the truth? Amen. Certainly it is. Now, I could speak to you long, but one word from Christ will mean more than all the words I could speak. Tired and strained in voice and weary as it is in voice. And then another thing in speaking, it's hard for this at my home. To have a successful meeting with the anointing of the Spirit like that. Why? Because this is my home. Jesus said that a prophet in his own home, his own country, even in his own county. It's just something that happens that way. They said that when he went to his own home, they said, isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother Mary here with us? Isn't all of his brothers here and his sisters? Don't we know them? What school did he come up out of? What seminary was he graduate of? What credentials does he carry? And he didn't come to any school or any seminary or any credentials, but he come from God. Amen. But they couldn't see it. They said, where does he get this wisdom? And when they seen him discern those thoughts of the people, when Peter come up to him, he said, your name's Simon. Your daddy's name is Jonas. It floored him. <laughs> How did he know him? <laughs> the Pharisee stood by and said, he's a Beelzebub. He's a chief of the fortune tellers. He's the devil. And Jesus said, you say that against me, the Son of Man, it'll be forgiven you. But when the Holy Ghost has come and does the same thing, and you speak one word against it, it'll never be forgiven you in this world or the world to come. Amen. Amen. So it's a dangerous thing. So how did he know? Why did he say that? He knew that them signs would cease until this last day. And this last day's he wouldn't be just to pour out His wrath upon a just people. They have, we have weighed in the balance and found one. All we think about is big time. Radio programs, uncensored. Elvis Presley, Arthur Godfrey, old dirty jokes. The radio and television loaded with it. We stay home on Wednesday night for the prayer meeting to see such Tommy Rod as that. And calling ourselves Christians. Then when God pours down His Spirit and shows signs of His resurrection, we condemn it and turn away, and there's unforgivable sin to do that. Wow. Jesus said, speak one word against it. It'll never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Amen. So that Spirit has to come in this last days to prove that Word of God to be true. I say under the authority of God's Word and the feeling of my own soul, that same Holy Ghost Spirit's right here now Amen. in the midst of this people. Now, I claim that He's raised from the dead. I claim He's alive forevermore. I claim He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same in principle, the same in power, the same in everything. All but His corporal body, which sits at the right hand of God in the majesty of glory. But the Holy Spirit is here working, moving, performing, doing just exactly like Jesus Christ did. For it's a proof of His resurrection. What a beautiful hour. Now I guess you see where I stand. Now not only with this little, about 100 people or 200 people here in, a, in this little building jammed in here tonight. But I've made that statement before thousands times thousands and hundreds of thousands. 
Help the Bible in one hand and the Koran the other. Say one's right and the other's wrong. And challenge every Mohammed priest to come and prove or any other Buddha or whatever he might be against the Koran and against their religion. But everybody keeps quiet. But brother, the reason I do that because I know my Redeemer liveth. It is the truth. Jesus Christ is alive. He's here. Now it's nothing within myself that I could do. It is a gift of God. How do you do it? It's just yielding yourself. Right in this building now is many, many angels. You say, is that the scripture? That is the Bible. Let me show you. How many Christians are here? Raise your hand. All right, you may put them down. The Bible said that the angels of God are encamped about those who fear Him. Then there's angels here. Then Christ said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. Then He's here. The only thing it is, you can't see Him. But by faith we believe it. Amen. I can prove to you that radio is coming through here too. Voices. I can prove to you that pictures are coming through here. It won't hit on this tube here. It won't hit on this, this crystal, on this mic. Neither will it come onto this piece of material because it wasn't made that way. But there is a piece of material who will re- reproduce that picture. Right. And God set some in the church, first apostles, then prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, all for the perfecting of the church. How can we turn one down and say the other isn't so? God does it Himself. Amen. There's nothing in the world but just yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit takes over from there. And you don't know what you're doing. It's the Holy Spirit's sovereign work. Now, friend, my hometown. I want to say this now before closing. This revival. One of these days there won't be even an ash left in Jeffersonville. There won't be one left in Charleston. Won't be one left in Louisville. This world's ripe for judgment. They've got a hydrogen bomb now that Russia can shoot from Moscow, land it on 4th Street and take every one of these powder plants around here and sink it 75 feet under the ground at one bomb. One bomb. 15 miles squared over 150 feet in the ground. The hands on the trigger. The clock's ticking away. It's later than you think. I'll wait till that time. Remember, if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have one already waiting. Amen. Don't be scared of hydrogen bombs or no other thing as long as you got Christ in your heart. That's the best bomb shelter I know of. Amen. It's made out of feathers under his wings. We'll abide. So don't worry about those things if you're a Christian. But if you're not a Christian, you're certainly standing in an awful place. You don't know what minute your heart's going to stop beating. The Bible said man would die in the last days with heart trouble. Man's heart failing, fear, perplexed of time, distress between the nations. Look what. More ten times as many men die as women. The Bible never said women's heart would be failing. It said man's heart would be failing. It's absolutely perfectly. The other day in Oakland, wife and I was over there in San Francisco. That great earthquake shook and the earth began to belch and hiccup there until the buildings rocked and the chimneys fell off. Great piles of air went up like that with smoke in it or soot or whatever it was out of those places. And the people running through the streets screaming. I thought, what will it be when the Lord really appears? The liquor charge went right on, putting up their liquor back on the shelves and selling it. The people come in to buy it. The man couldn't sell it and nobody bought it. That's right. It's we are the guilty ones. Let me tell you, brother, I'm an American and I love my country. But this old nation is weighed in the balance and found wanting. She's sinking as certain as I'm a minister behind this platform tonight. Amen. Now I'm saying that to find favor with God. I'm saying it because God puts it on my heart to say it. And the best thing for you to do is make ready for the coming of the Lord. 
Now believe him, have faith in him. Now all the words I could say, I say again, wouldn't mean one thing to what Jesus would say. But do you realize where I'm standing? With this group of people tonight, I've, I've either misinterpreted something or told the truth. Now, if Jesus Christ is arisen from the dead and promised the same things he did, we do also. And I came from a little baby boy. I wasn't 18 months old, I guess. But not over two years anyhow, when I saw my first vision. It's been all my life. The people here in the tabernacle know that. As long as I've been here, not one time has it ever failed and it never will fail. Because it's gone. Around the world it's went. A great revival has lit. And now by the grace of God, I'm in my second million souls right in my home meeting winning to the Lord Jesus. Second million. That's right. And just think of the other millions that went out. Old Roberts. All of them sparks just lit off from the thing and went on. Thousands times thousands till around the world there's one great big revival of God's power moving. And the devil's turning loose all kinds of false things that counteract it. But the real true word of God will go straight to the end. It'll never fail. I, the Lord, have planted it. I'll water it day and night lest some should pluck it from my hand. Now, tonight I claim that Christ raised from the dead. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, the Lord bless you. If He'll do that, then you're, if you believe it, God bless you. Ask Him then when He comes on the scene. If Christ will appear here at this platform, here's the challenge. If Jesus Christ, God's Son, will appear right here at the platform and do the same things that He did when He was here on earth, will you believe Him? Look at him on the road to Emmaus, how them boys broke, when he broke that bread, he did something there that no other man could do. It was something that Christ alone could do, and they recognized it. Now, if he'll do the same thing here that only Christ alone can do, not some false thing, but the very same thing that he did, then you believe him, receive him, have faith in him, love him. Serving. Let me tell you, just don't join church now. That won't work. You've got to be born again. Not an emotional workup. Not some little something you said, but I shouted, I spoke with tongues, I've done this, that, and it. When really down in your heart something comes that's changed you. And you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You receive the person Christ Jesus. When old things die out and new things are born again. You make things right that you did wrong. You love your enemies. You pray for those who despitefully use you. That's when you're a Christian. The tree's known by the fruit it bears. May the Lord bless you now as we bow our head. I'm going to ask your sister to go to the piano. Slowly play the great physician. Now is near the sympathizing Jesus. And you on the outside now it has got prayer cards. Move up close to the door. We'll start just in a moment. Let us pray. Our blessed Heavenly Father, oh, my poor voice, four months of speaking, I'm just so tired in my voice, but I pray that you'll help me just now. Here will be another milestone at the Branham Tabernacle. Here will be another witness to rise in the last days at the day of the judgment. Many standing inside and out tonight. Many of them are wondering. Many are thinking, is it true or isn't it true? Oh, eternal and blessed Father, we pray that you'll now manifest your love to us by appearing here and making your word true. I have spoke of your word like you did yourself to Cleopas and his friend to Emmaus. And on our road, Lord, as we're journeying, you speak to us through your word. And now, come among us, O oh, great Christ. Come among us. 
prove your words to be true and make manifest your being here tonight as we four unworthy creatures confess that we are sinners and not worthy of these things. But we believe it, Lord, and by grace we accept it through faith that we are saved in your children. Bless us now, Lord. I know your word is true when he said about the prophet in his own city, among his own people. But, Lord, I pray just for this night that you'll just look down to the people and manifest yourself once more here in this city through the moving of the Holy Spirit. Oh, eternal God, bless us now as we wait on you and do the things that you did before your crucifixion and Jeffersonville will be without a single thing to complain, but we know that they'll be without an excuse on that day that you have manifested yourself. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. What she wants me to pray for, no, it is not the cancer, for she's healed of that, but she wants me to pray for a back trouble she's got. That's right. It's a trouble in her back. Is that right? Now, do you believe he raised him today? Now, watch. If I talk to her just a little longer, maybe something else would be said I don't know. Now, I had no idea what your trouble... I don't know now what it was. See? But the recorders has got it. You can find out what he said. Let's talk just a minute longer and see if you'll tell me something else. I see a woman that looks something on the order. It's another woman, and she's praying for her, and she's in some kind of an institution or a hospital. It's kind of a, it's a mental place. It's Madison, Indiana. It, it's a, it's a, a sister that you're wanting prayer for that's in an institution. And if you will believe with all your heart and all that is within you, God will deliver and will heal your back and make you well. You believe it now? Or right, come near. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that in Jesus Christ's name that you'll heal the woman and make her well and grant this blessing unto her. And I pray that the mercies of God will rest upon her and will heal her and give glory unto thyself. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I might say this. There's a vibration coming from there. From right back here. Just a moment. Stand there just a minute. I noticed that light left you. There's too many too crowded around me here. Everybody's a pulling. But I see it moving to you. It's somebody, it's you God's got a female operation coming up. That's right. I seen two or three people appear. The light flew right back there and hit that person standing right back there. It's Sam praying for that. That's right. And you've got, it's a condition of a lady that's got a female operation. That's right. I go and receive your healing. And the Lord God make you well. Amen. Would you come? The lady, do you believe on the Lord Jesus? Do you believe that he raised from the dead? Now to know you, I don't. I might have seen you. If you're from around here, I don't know. People come and go. I'm not around the tabernacle here. Enough to know. But you, uh, you are from the city. You're from the city. All right. Then, but I don't know you. But Christ does know you. But if he will reveal to me standing here, what you're here for, will you believe it and accept it? And you know I don't know what you're here for. I have no idea. Only thing you might have seen me around town or something, or, or something, I don't know. That's up to God to know that. Right back there, do you want to get over that bowel trouble you've been having? 
you believe the Lord Jesus will make you well? If you believe it, you can have it. The other's got a bad blood count sitting back there. I see him take. You believe the Lord will make you well? All right. You believe with all your heart? Then you can have your healing. God healed you just then. You touched him. You never touched me. You're 30 feet away from me. Amen. Now, do you believe he's raising the dead? Just look and live now while the lines are moving. Oh, it is so hard here in Jeffersonville. You, in a crowd like this all around you, everybody. Jesus took a man by the hand and led him out of town one time. Amen. Now look this way, sister, just a moment. Believe that the Lord Jesus is present to help you. You are suffering with a trouble that's in the rectal. And a doctor has examined you. And he told you it was hemorrhoids. I see you also trying to move across the house and you're going real slow. You have arthritis. That's thus saith the Lord. The doctor said that you must be operated on. That's exactly right. And I seen him sign that little card there in his office. Rebecca Baker, 509 Graham Street. That's exactly right. That's in his office on the record. That's right. Do you believe? Then you can have your healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may this woman receive her healing. Amen. Amen. God bless you, lady. Go believe me now. Have faith in God. If you could only realize the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now the lady standing here, as you might, I don't know you as far as I know. You don't know me, and I don't know you, is that right? All right. And you're somebody that doesn't know me, and I don't know them. And I didn't know the other lady. But this lady's a total stranger as far as I know. If that's right, raise up your hand, lady. Our first time ever meeting in life. Here's a woman and a man. Just a beautiful picture of St. John 4, where a woman and a man met. And the woman was a Samaritan. Jesus was a Jew. And they began to talk to each other. And Jesus revealed the secrets of her heart. And let her know where her trouble was. Now, if he's the same Jesus today, he can do the same work today. If this woman will raise her hand to God, not to swear because we don't believe in doing it, just raise her hand up in sincerity with mine that we've never seen one another before and know nothing about each other. Will you raise up your hand, lady? There you are. She's never seen me. I've never seen her, and she's a total stranger. Now, if there is the presence of the Lord Jesus is here, if the woman's sick, I couldn't heal her. She's already been healed. Christ healed her when he died for her. Do you believe that? Amen. But if he was standing here now with, in where I'm standing, and he would, could reveal to her or do something to bring her faith up to me, now she might be standing here for financial trouble. She might be standing here in domestic trouble. She might be standing here dying with a cancer. She might be standing here with TB. I don't know. I can't tell you. <coughs> and now if you want to put yourself in my place, come here and take my place. You're welcome. Certainly. Neither do I know. Neither would I do it. But the God of heaven knows. Can you understand now? Amen. And if Christ will perform the same thing here, the infallible proof, like he's raised from the dead and proved that he's the same Jesus that talked to the woman at the well. How many in here say, I will receive him right now as my healer or whatever I have need of? Raise your hand say, I will receive him if you'll do that. The woman with her hands up, we never met. The Lord granted is my prayer. Thank you. 
Now the lady seems to be moving from me. If the audience can pick up my voice. I see someone standing. It's not for herself so much. She's praying for somebody else. And that's an elderly lady. It's her mother she's praying for. That's true. She has little heart packs, little heart flutters like she can't sleep at night. Isn't that right? Raise your hand if that's true. And that lady's not from this country. That lady's from away from here. That lady is from Georgia. That's exactly right. And you're from Georgia. And you want prayer for your eyes too. You're going blind in your eyes. And that's true. You believe God will make you well? If that's true, raise up your hand. All right. Now do you believe? Amen. Now have faith in God. Amen. While I'm praying for her, pray you're for yourself out there and believe God. He's your omnipresent. Come here, Amen. sister. Blessed Savior, I pray that in Christ's name that you will grant to this woman her desire. May the power of Almighty God rest upon her and may she be healed and get every what she asks for. I pray this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Now go rejoicing and happy and believe, sister, and be made well. All right. I'm not sure, but I believe I know this woman. I believe you're from Georgetown. Because I'm, aren't you, Brother Oregon Bright's relation? Of course, now this anointing, it, it's different. You realize that there's difference right now. When I talk to you somewhere else, it's different right now. You feel a real pleasant feeling like it's the Holy Spirit. You're not here for yourself. You're here for somebody else. And that's a little girl, about four or five years old. She's got kidney trouble. And she lives in northern Indiana. That's true. That what you got in your hand, send it to her, and she'll be made well. Believe with all your heart now, and receive what you ask for, in Christ's name. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Here's a lady that's a stranger to me. I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. We are strangers to each other, many years apart, maybe many, but born many miles apart. I don't know you, never seen you, but Jesus Christ knows you. Something happened in the audience, a man appeared by me. Here he sits right here, ruptured navel. You believe, sir? Then Christ heals you and makes you well. Amen. That's the way to do it. Believe. What did he touch? I never seen the man, but he was healed right there. He touched the Lord Jesus who's present here. Take away that unbelief from you. Forget about me being William Branham. Look at Jesus Christ. He's the one that's here. I challenge your faith in Christ's name to forget about me and believe that this is the Lord Jesus here and see what will happen. I don't care where you are in the building. Now here's a little woman. i never seen her. She's older than I. She, I don't know who she is, where she's from, nothing about her. I am a perfect stranger to her. But Christ knows her. If he will reveal to me what you're here for, will you receive it and believe it? You had a funny feeling a few minutes ago when I spoke something, didn't you? It was your sister that's in the insane institution in Madison, Indiana. So correct for another woman to stand here and you're standing there looking right over this way and the vision you were believing when you come up. It's exactly right. That's what done it. And the reason you're here tonight is because you got a heart trouble. 
You just had a heart attack. Exactly right. And I see now as I look at a vision that rolling land. You're from somewhere. You're in southern Indiana. You're from near Carden. That's where you're from. Go back home. You're well. Jesus Christ makes you well. That's thus saith the Holy Spirit. Have faith and believe. Don't doubt. Just only believe. Can you recognize the omnipresent presence of the Lord Jesus? How wonderful. What's the matter? Over here in the corner, I see a vision. The doctor don't know whether it's cancer or TB. That's right. But if you believe it, you're healed anyhow. Your faith is saved, you woman. There you are, the omnipresence of the living God. I challenge your faith. If thou canst believe. Now he has risen from the dead. He share with us. That's him. That's the very things he did when he was here on earth. Two thousand years has passed. He's still alive. And he's alive forevermore. Just believe, have faith. I don't know you, lady. I never seen you in my life. Know nothing about you. That's true, isn't it? Jesus Christ knows you. If God will reveal to me what you're here for, will you believe Him and believe me to be His prophet? If He'll do that, you know something's got me anointed. You don't have to know it's that. Now, if I said. I'm going to lay my hands on you, be healed. You'd have a right to doubt that. But if God tells me something that you know to be the truth, then you know whether that's truth or not. Is that right? It's a female disorder. Operated. I see you coming off the operating table with something white over your face. But it wasn't successful. That's right. But that devil hid from the doctor, but he can't hide from God. Go home and be well, lady. Jesus Christ has healed you and made you well. If you can believe, I'm a stranger to you, lady. Do you believe Jesus Christ, God's Son, is here? You believe that He'll make you well? Diabetes is nothing for God to heal. You believe He'll make you well? Then go home and receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. God's son. Amen. Come, little lady. Do you believe? Now stop thinking that back there. It is not a telepathy. You can't get away with it now. Let me show you. I don't know this woman. Lay your hands on mine, lady. If God will reveal to me what your trouble, me looking this way, you know I'm not reading your mind. If God will reveal to me what your trouble, will you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and I'll be His servant? If you will, raise up your hand. You got a female trouble. A lady's trouble. That's right. You did have. You have it now. You're healed. Go on your road and rejoice. And be glad. Come, sir. That old kidney trouble and stuff bothering you. You believe God will make you well? Yes. Healy of it, then in the name of Jesus Christ, receive your healing and go on your road rejoicing. Amen. God bless you, brother. Believe. How do you do, lady? Wouldn't you love to go eat a good meal again like you used to? You've been all nervous, haven't you? Cause the peptic ulcer to be in your stomach. Go get you a hamburger and eat it. Jesus Christ will make you well. Go on your road rejoicing. If thou canst believe, have faith in God. Do you believe? The living, omnipotent Christ is present here now to heal every person in here. Just a moment. Way back down the line, sitting right down here, such a young man.
your faith greater than you thought you had, son. You had heart trouble, didn't you? If that's right, stand up on your feet. Jesus Christ heals you, son. You're well. Go on your road and be well. Do you believe him? Have faith in God. There's a man I don't know. We're strangers to each other. I believe this man was baptized this morning. But I don't know you. Don't have no idea about you. Is that right? If Jesus Christ will reveal to me what you're here for, will you accept it? How many of the audience will receive it right now? If thou canst believe. Just have faith, don't doubt. The man has a skin trouble. That's right. And I see you exa- it's a prostrate trouble also. That's right. If it is, wave your hands. And I see something dark standing between you and a woman. It's your wife. You're praying for her. She's a sinner. And you'll want her to become a Christian. That's thus saith the Lord. That's right. Go lay your hands on her and pray for her. God in heaven, reveal her. Do you believe? Do you believe that God will do it? If thou canst believe, I challenge your faith. Way back in the back, wherever you are, look and live. Have faith in God wherever you are. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. If you can believe. Watch. Look this way. Pray. You say, what are you watching, Brother Branham? Rebecca. Come back this way a little, honey. Stop right where you are. There's my little girl who someday will be a prophetess also. That lady standing right there by you, honey, with a white hat on. She's suffering with the sinus trouble. Raise your hand or stand to your feet, lady. You're praying that God would let me call you. Is that right? Let my little girl lay her hands on you there. Oh, eternal God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke that demon that's bothering that woman and let it be removed in Christ's name. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. May the Lord Jesus reveal himself to you. Do you believe he's here? Then let me tell you, every one of you right now, if you can believe it, Jesus Christ, make every one of you well right now. If my words is true here, it's true there. If you'll do what I tell you to do, you can be healed right now. Do you believe it? Then put your hands on one another. Just lay your hands over on one another, inside or out. Don't you down. I heard a deaf spirit leave. There he is, the resurrected Christ. Oh, eternal and blessed God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I challenge every unclean spirit. In the name of Christ the Lord, that it will leave this place, go out of these people, and may the great Holy Ghost now baptize everyone in here with great faith to believe. Oh, Satan, you demon, you bluffed us long enough. Christ is raised. He's standing here with the keys of death and hell hanging on him. The power of healing has been paid for, and we adjure thee by the name of Jesus Christ the living Son of God, that you depart from these people. Come out of them, Satan, that they go and be made well. If you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ heals you, stand up to your feet and accept the divine healing power of Almighty God. That's it. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. You're everyone healed. Stand on your feet and give God the praise. Amen. Blessed 
be the name of the Lord. Let's give him praise as we raise our hands and praise and bless the Son of the living God.